Okay, I just got back from the swap meet and I got a whole bunch of junk to play with. Probably most notable are these uh, three VT73s I just got. Uh, they're in pretty rough shape. Uh, they're all missing the knobs. Chassis is a little bit loose in this one. And they all have that thing that happens where the gasket around the CRT melts and sort of makes a goo that falls down the screen. But they were dirt cheap, so I couldn't resist. Also got like bags of pots and this huge tube. So that was pretty successful. Gonna see if I can potentially get these working again. So here's a look at these from the back. One of these is missing all of its tubes, so that's kind of a non-starter. One of these has most of its tubes, and this one has all of its tubes at the bottom, so... And I have a bunch of spares, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh yeah, also something notable, this one's missing its high voltage cage. You can see it has like a can see the high voltage coil in the back there and uh, these sets will <clears throat> these sets will not work with that missing it will generate too much interference so unless I'm able to find one of those this might become a, a part set or something like that but probably we'll be able to get at least two out of the three working okay here's the top one pretty rusty and there are there are two tubes in it, uh, and it has a metal plate on the bottom. Let's take a look underneath. Looks pretty original. I don't see anything that immediately jumps out of at me as being a replacement. Even though this one's missing its tubes, uh, this looks like it could be a good restore candidate. Okay, so here's the second one, the one from down here. This one has a more of a copper colored chassis where the other one looks like it was galvanized steel. And uh, it is missing more tubes than I thought, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, the main thing that's keeping this one from being fixed up is this box, as I said earlier. I'd have to make something for that. So, let's take a look underneath. Okay, this one looks fairly complete as well, but there's been some, looks like there's some modification up there. I don't know if you saw in the previous one, but there are high voltage caps up here that couple the uh, waveforms to the deflection plates, and uh, those are those have been cut out of here. So someone has definitely been messing with this set. And that, that makes me less inclined to want to jump in because who knows what kind of stuff they, they did. Okay, and here's the third one. Now, a slight correction to what I said earlier. The first one I showed was a VT71, and these bottom two are VT73s, like a, I think they're called a suitcase set. But this one is missing the... Suit, uh, suitcase cover. So, again, dusty, but it looks less rusty than the other ones. So let's... Okay, this one also looks fairly complete. So here are those high voltage caps I was talking about that had been removed in the other one. And it uh, looks like these... Yeah, these have been replaced in here, but at least they're there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do for the set is make a reproduction ballast tube for it. Here's the original ballast, and it actually tests good. But uh, just for testing on this set and working on it in the meantime, I don't want to risk burning this out. 
So I'm going to try to make a replacement. And for that, uh, I'm going to use one of these uh, metal tubes. I had another one of these that was uh, burnt out. And uh, I recovered the base off of it. And if you see, the base is actually the same as the one used on the ballast tube. And so that will give me a, a nice little platform to work on to add my components. So originally in here, this is uh, basically nothing but uh, resistance wire stretched out on mica. And the main thing that generates heat are the dropping resistors for the filament string. Uh, if you look on the schematic for the TV, uh, here's the filament string right here. And it's split into two separate strings because there's uh, 16 tubes in the set. And then and there are too many tubes to have all of their filaments run in, in series. But there's not quite enough to have both strings in parallel without a resistor. So if you look up here, you see there's two 105 ohm resistors. And those are inside the ballast. And I read online about a guy that replaced those with just uh, capacitors to make like a capacitor dropper type thing. And uh, he used two 10 microfarad capacitors. And uh, I have these 4.7s right here. So I think I'm going to put two of these in parallel uh, for each string and assemble them on here. And just power the setup with uh, filament power, just to see that all the tubes light up. And uh, I won't have the other section of the ballast installed, which is uh, this resistor and this resistor right here. So no B plus will get to the set, and it'll just be filaments lighting up. I also will have to bypass the CRT filament because I don't have one installed right now and don't want to risk burning it out. And I will just run, uh, run this on reduced line voltage. Okay, so here is the capacitors installed for the filament string. And I am just going to install this and uh, try powering the setup to just see that we have all of the filaments being lit. Still got to put a jumper in here first. Okay, so I have the set hooked up to this Variac right here. And I'm just going to slowly bring it up while watching the current. Okay, start to see that one lighting up. Okay, so I've let, had this sit for a little while, and it looks like half the tubes are not lit up. So looks like we have an open in one side of the filament circuit. So I'm going to get a voltmeter and see if we can try to find where the break in that circuit is. Okay, so half of the filament string is out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull some tubes out and see if I can test their filaments. So this is a 12SN7 right here. And a lot of these octal tubes, the at least uh, these types, they have uh, filament continuity usually between 8 and 7. So if we go go to there between eight seven okay so we've about seven ohms there so that tube is good this 25l6 is not supposed to be in there this, two, uh, this set came with the wrong tube in there. That's supposed to be a 6SL7. So, uh, 
let's put this in here and see if that fixes stuff. Okay, so let's let's give this a shot. Okay, that's a good sign. Okay, you can't you can't trust the tubes that people leave in there. Okay, so now that we sorted out the filament string issue, we have all of the tubes lighted up. I'm actually going to try to do a controlled power up of this with uh, the remaining elements of the ballast installed. So what I've done is I added the remaining resistors to the ballast and I also have it in this tube socket extender just so it's a little easier to take in and out. And I'm just going to have my meter plug uh, connected to the B plus supply of the set and just uh, slowly ramp up the variac to see if we get any B plus and uh, maybe hook a speaker up to try to see if we can get some sound as well. Okay, so I have it all hooked up to power. We're just playing around at this point. I kind of want to see if we can get to do anything without doing much to it. I, I know all of these caps have to be changed. I just want to see if we can get anything out of it. So I have it plugged into the Variac and I'm going to start increasing the line voltage a little bit. Okay, 60 volts, have about Okay, doesn't look like we have any high voltage. We have some noise from the speaker. I kind of don't want to run it any longer than that. But it looks like the capacitors are doing okay. One of them is slightly warm. The selenium rectifiers are a little bit warm, but they're not hot. So I think what I'll do next is I'll replace these high voltage capacitors and see if we can get some high voltage. Okay, so first I think I'm going to change these high voltage capacitors right here. And uh, I have a bunch of these 3000 volt caps, 0.01 microfarad at 3000 volts. And I have two of them in series, and that will replace these 0 0.05, 0 0.005 microfarads at 6000 volts. And the reason I'm changing these ones first. Uh, compared to all of these, is that the high voltage generator for this set has a relatively low current output. And if it, any of these have any leakage, it will pretty much overwhelm the supply and just uh, drop it down to zero. So I'm going to solder these in here and uh, see if we can get some high voltage. Okay, so I just finished putting those capacitors in there, and now I'm going to try to turn it on again to see if I can get some high voltage out of this.
Okay, turning it on. Okay, I'm not I'm still not getting anything. So either we have a bad tube, we have a bad capacitor down there. Or there's no power getting to the circuit somehow. Uh, another possibility is that this rectifier could be gassy. And uh, it's just causing a short on the high voltage output. Now, if this was a different type of set, we could just take this off and then try to arc to it to see if we could get an arc. But we can't do that on this set because this tube right here gets feedback from the high voltage rectifier tube. So we have to have this on in order for it to work. Yeah, so there's 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 nothing there. So we have to we have to try to figure this out. Okay, I'm gonna do the easy thing first and just put a new 25L6 in there. Okay, so still have got nothing there. So I guess now I'm going to try to check voltages or something like that. Maybe I'm, maybe there's a power supply voltage or something missing below. Okay, so I was checking around underneath again. And I'm sure one of you noticed this before I did, but... If you look down there, there's a resistor burned in half. So, that's, that's a problem. So, I'm pretty sure that is R118 right there, the cathode resistor. So at some point in the past, that tube was overloaded or it stopped oscillating or something, and it drew excessive current, and it blew up that resistor right there. So that might mean the original tube that was in there is toast because probably had to pass a whole bunch of current in order to fry that resistor. Um, so I, I could just put a new resistor in there, but something caused that. Um, I don't think it should do that just through aging of the components. I think something went wrong. So... I'll put a new resistor in there, but I'll keep a very close eye on it when I power it up because I'm pretty sure something else is wrong causing that to blow up like it did. Okay, so I was able to find a nice old carbon comp resistor to put in there. So I will install this and uh, give it another power up. Okay, so I have that new 100 ohm resistor installed in there. And I'm going to put the original high voltage uh, oscillator tube back in there and try to power this up again. Okay, so I have the original 25L6 in there and I'm going to power this up. Oh, have high voltage. Okay, I think I might get the C get the cabinet up here and try to plug the CRT in. Okay, I'm going to power it up now. Hey, we have something. Hey, 
Hey, we have focus. Looks like this is a good CRT right here. And we're almost out of shoes. God, that looks, that is great for replacing hardly anything. Okay, so we're having vertical issues, and that's not surprising. Uh, still have all of the old wax caps in there, so I'm going to try to actually figure out if it's a cap in particular that's causing this by changing them out one by one to see how things improve. Okay, so the first capacitor I'm going to try to change is this one right here. This one goes directly to the grid of one half of the vertical output tube. So uh, I think that one could cause the most trouble at least. So I'm going to snip that out and I'm going to test it to see how it tests. And uh, just for experimental purposes, I'm going to tech this in. So these are 2.1 microfarad 400 volt caps in series. Uh, these are just out of my scrap bin. I, I don't have the proper caps for this set. But I'm just going to try to get this working and then uh, we can worry about getting the proper caps later. Okay, so that cap is right here. So I'm just going to snip it out and hook up my cap tester. So what this tester does is it uh, applies up to 500 volts to this capacitor and it will give us an indication of leakage with this neon bulb. It doesn't tell us if the capacitor has the right capacitance or not, but just that it's leaky. Okay, that capacitor is leaky at 50 volts. So now let's, let's hook this one up. Okay, our new one has no leakage at all, up to 500 volts. Okay, so I have that capacitor replaced right there. It is J-hooked in there. Uh, that's plenty secure, and uh, it doesn't disturb the original terminals at all. So that'll be easy to replace once I get the proper capacitor in there. So let's see if that made any difference. Okay, I have it put back in the cabinet. Uh, let's turn it on and see what it does. Okay, not getting anything on the screen. Hey, wait, just have to turn the brightness up. Hey, you got something. Seems like I hear a little bit of sound out of the speaker, but not much. I'm going to try to hook up a signal. Starting to get something come through there.
Seems like it's slowly coming back to life. Okay, so we don't have any sink whatsoever. There is video getting through though, but it's not very, not very strong. I'm putting a pretty strong signal in there. Uh, there's obviously still things wrong with the vertical, but it is sort of working. So what I might do is try to see if I can get the sink separator to work. Okay, so here is the sink separator, or sink clipper, whatever you'd like to call it. So these two triodes right here. And what this does is it takes the video signal, and it basically amplifies it so much that the only thing left is the uh, sink pulses right here. So on the output right here, only thing left is basically the sync pulses for the horizontal and vertical mixed together. And uh, this little transformer right here sort of is only receptive to the horizontal pulses. And uh, right here, this little integrator thing sort of only filters out the vertical pulses. And since we don't have a vertical or horizontal sync, we can be pretty sure the problem is here because if the problem was right here in the horizontal, we'd have vertical sync. And if the problem was here in the vertical, we would still have horizontal sync. So what I'm gonna do is we have two capacitors going directly to grids of the, these two tubes. So I think I'm gonna uh, replace both of those and try it again. Okay. Just gonna snip one end. and put the ground end of the tester on the place that's still connected and a positive on the end that's disconnected. Yep, and that's leaky at 25 volts. Okay, so I have that capacitor replaced with those. Now I'm going to snip this one and see how leaky it is. Okay, leaky at 50 volts. So let's let's just get that one out of there. Okay, so those two caps have been replaced. I'm going to put this together and see if we have sync now. Okay, let's give this a shot. Promising. Okay, so 
think just the issues are just bad capacitors, so it might be time to just stop messing around and just uh, recap the whole thing. Okay, so I went ahead and I recapped pretty much the whole thing. Only one that's left in there is this. And uh, I've had pretty good experience with these being okay, at least for the short term. So I think I'm going to try to hook this up again and give it a, another shot. And uh, if that works, I'm going to try to tackle the CRT being rotated. Okay, let's give this a shot. Okay, that looks a lot better. Seems like there's a bit of a little bit of interference in the picture. But that that sure looks a lot better. Yeah, that, that might be tough to figure out, that interference, though. Okay, so here's a look inside. Something I just noticed was that the shield on the CRT is missing. So I might have to steal that from one of the other sets, or just put the this chassis into one of the other sets. But down there we can see the gasket. So I'm just going to take this off and try to free it uh, from being stuck to the gasket down there. So we can try to rotate this just a little bit. Okay, that's our picture tube. And we're going to try to clean some of that stuff off the front very carefully. And down there as well. And then we can try to either steal the shield from the other set or just try to put the chassis in the other set to see if it works better with a CRT that has a shield on it. Okay, so I have the CRT cleaned up. I think it looks pretty good. And I'm just going to see how it works outside the set itself. Okay. So you still so we see we still have that interference. But uh this is actually performing quite well. You can see lines all the way out to here. So this set doesn't need an alignment at all. I just need to see if I can fix that noise a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can steal the shield out of the other set. Okay, so I got those screws taken out. There's just this aluminum band right here. And, okay, so that, that just comes out. 
So I might just take this whole thing out and deal with that. Okay, so I have the set powered on with the shield installed. And the interference is worse. So I think there's something more serious wrong with this set. So I'm going to have to try to figure that out. Okay, so I think I found the problem here. So it turns out this big metal box right here, uh, it's not actually at ground potential. There's an insulator underneath it. And if that shorts out to ground, we get our interference there. So the shield did not solve the noise issue in the picture. Uh, there's still a problem with that, but that might be more than I want to tackle right now. So I think what I'll try to do next is just try to at least get this put back together and try to troubleshoot that another day. So I think what I'm going to try to do now is uh, try to clean that gunk out. From there and see if I can find a way to make a piece of foam or something to mount the CRT in there. Okay, so the base on this CRT is loose and you got to be really careful with that because uh, if you pull on here you can break the wires off on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I have this and I'm just going to apply a little bit of this around that seam right there and move this back and forth to try to strengthen that little a little bit. The correct way to do this is to take the whole base off and coat the inside with this or some other glue. But I don't want to risk doing that. So I'm just going to apply a little bit around this edge to try to strengthen that a little bit. Okay, so I was able to get it cleaned up and put back together. Uh, I just found a, a section of white towel cut into a strip just to use as the bezel for now. There are a few scuffs on the faceplate, but there's not much I can do about that without fully polishing it. And uh, seems like just getting it all put back together with the shield in place fixed a lot of those noise issues I had. So let's see how it's working now. Okay, so my setup for signal right now is I have a laptop with a little bit of Musty One playing on it. I have that going to HDMI to a composite converter. And I have that going over to a converter box. And then that going to the TV set. So let's just see how this goes. More fuel to be drawn up. It just doesn't seem to want to take it. I'm not one for giving up. Let's get the gasket out of there real quick. I'm going to turn the brightness down a little bit. Three down. See if we can get that to pop right out of there. Have a, a bad o-ring or something around it. So this actually has a really good picture. 
for a seven inch set like this you can clearly see the raster lines yeah, look real quick and make sure those pores has really good focus and you can even read the tiny text right there I see some crap for the video time sometimes they have an o-ring on that part of it too so this actually is one of the better performing sets i have now which is pretty cool considering how it was a cheap set for the day so now uh just in the future i'll just have to fix the cabinet more and make it more presentable because it's pretty trashed but at least it works now so that's pretty cool. Time. Tear the carb down to nothing and clean it. Let's get that Richmond electric choke, whatever you want to call it, out of there. Another thing I was thinking too, I wonder if that emulsion tube all the way up. And the flow. Kind of like a straw you put it in water and, and you, know, you blow air across the top of it and it draws up in the path of the flow of air usually they protrude about between like an eighth and a quarter of an inch into the the path of the air that's going through the carburetor let's see what we got anything here again this is just going to be electric solenoid that should fire and pull itself in as needed to.